Well, here we are again. Let the tombstones dry overnight. They're nice and solid. Already went ahead and did some of the artwork on pretty much all of them. So now I'm making four of them. So on this step, I'm going to use this one to kind of show you on how we carve it and shape it. Um, one of the other tools that I use, other than the hot knife, is just a cheap soldering iron that you can also get from the 99 cent store or upgrade to Dollar Tree. Um, if you can find one there that has like a switch like this one, it says 15 watt and 30 watt. 30 watt is pretty good for doing most of the stuff. Uh, only time I really needed to drop down to 15 is if I really don't want to go deep and wide. Um, just like with the hot knife, it takes a little practice on getting it. Um, if you notice, I have like, looks like scribbles on here. I tend, well, it, that's just in my mind. Um, I did the letter and like I kind of have a center idea i'll start this way to go that way and this way to, to go that way to make it even but of course you know i'm trying to spell it in my head forward direction and, and yet write in reverse but did it in writing to know what i'm supposed to be carving out same thing from down here you know i think faster than i write um so i'm going to go ahead and just do the name first while i have this fresh on my head so i don't repeat it permanently so i so we're just going to go ahead using the same technique and method with that, you know, kind of stay with way within the lines and just let it melt its way. And I'm just kind of going lightly on the tip of it. If I want to go deeper, I'll just, just dive it in. If I'm just trying to carve, I'm just actually for the letter, I'm just kind of carving and shaping it and literally melt, melting a void in there. I mean, this is more finer than using that thing for something like this, so I want to keep that in mind. The southern iron is a really good idea for this kind of bullshit. So it's hard to see my lines here knowing that I made a goof. <sighs> so, have any of you seen a grown man naked? So quiet. I mean, this part is just really, really nothing much to explain. It's just, hey, a little practice here. Yeah, got that part done. Scroll from the top, work my way down. And by the way, it, when you're just when you're drawing out stuff like this, it's okay to scribble it because. Obviously, it's all going to get painted over. And of course, all this stuff is recessed in. And part of the next step after when it's all carved in, I'm just going to kind of like fill the letter in with black. Black paint. It's, that's what's going to make it stand out. Now, I'm not going to just do all of this with the with the old soldering iron. It just kind of makes it easier. I'll take some of the wider and bigger stuff and kind of clean it up with the hot knife using the flat edge part. Just to kind of like smooth it. It's just, you know, just kind of tracing the lines. But except for in here, this, this part actually goes kind of quick um, I'm a little creative in my handwriting I just kind of write it in this font by hand just to, for lettering and size but you know, I'll end up doing like this I'm not really used to this hand too much to write with I'm actually left-handed and again I think the only person, only type of people that'll get mad at me for these type of tombstones, freaking Karens of the world. So these are the lettering. Now the other thing I kind of want to do is, this trick, is I want to give this thing some cracks. Use the same tool. So you can like, let's say a good crack would be 
right here just take it on the side and just drag it so in random little do the pull off probably put in another little stress crack here crack there maybe the one here go this way go up just a little bit got a little too thin here but just one guy there Maybe one here for ducks. Okay. Now I'll go to the side to where it is to kind of look like make it uniformed a little bit. That. And you can't see this one here, but it's just kind of like the same as the other. And then over here. Okay, that's a crack, a couple cracks. Now maybe we can take out a chip, like maybe at the bottom, like it was hit by like a lawnmower. So I'll just take the edge of the, of the knife, just kind of run it on the edge a little bit. This, pull it off, a chip taken off there. Maybe a little chip here in the bevel, like that. It's gonna look like the guy's been dead for a while. Um, okay, that's enough for cracks. Propane torch. By the way, you don't need the yellow gas. I just prefer to use yellow gas for a bunch of other stuff. It's The difference is this stuff is hotter than the blue stuff. For this thing, you probably would want the blue, but I have a skilled hand and brains. So, For me, I'm just gonna keep it farther away than yellow, but what we kinda of wanna do is, this, see that? Put in a little, oh. make that a little bit, emphasized a little bit more. Okay, maybe even a little bit on the side, those ducks. Where we are. And maybe even here at the edge. Some age technique. Okay. I don't know how well you can see it. But here, let me take the other thing. Oh, yeah. So the next step for this thing is going to be uh, the creation of the monster mud and we're going to coat these things. Let's make some goddamn monster mud. Okay, to make some monster mud, we're going to, here's how we're going to do it. We're going to need five, pound, uh, five parts of either joint compound or spackling paste. I have some spackling paste left over from a little bit a while back. Actually, this thing's brand new, just never opened it. Uh, this may not be enough for my project here, but we'll just use it up. If I have to get more, I'll get more. Um, so you need five parts spackling paste and one part latex paint. Don't get confused why there's so many latex paints here. The reason why I have some in here, these are all partial older ones. They're basically in whites and grays because the base color for the monster mode, I want it in a gray. So, and I already have like one corner this it's one gray there but this is a white this is a white this is a white and this is a black for tintin and we also for what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a little bit of some more type on three wood glue type on three is great because it's waterproof so it helps with the little moisture sealing from outside the same stuff we use to glue the tombstones together um and also what we're gonna need, you're gonna need some, I would just get some cheap brushes cause good to throw away, you don't have to be perfect. And mix and paddle, and some type of bucket. 
Um, it also, remember, it also depends on how much you're going to be making for your project. Let's say if you're going to make a full-size statue, I would suggest getting a big thing of joy compound instead of a little thing of this. For just for my four big tombstones, I may not have enough, but I'm just going to go ahead and mix all this back on paste and all that. And Well, not all that, but one part of paint to the color I like, and we'll see how it goes. So we're going to get started on making it up and mixing it up, and then... Hopefully not f***ing it up. Alright, what you're seeing is the bottom of my bucket here. So, I'm going to pour in. We're dumping all the spackling paste. Now, another little thing is, after you mix it per my instructions, whatever, five parts of compound spackling paste to one part mud if you want it a little thicker or thinner I suggest just add a little bit more paint or a little less paint it's all in the viscosity okay I'm trying to get every little bit of it that I can Now, when I say like part, you don't have to be dead on exact. Just come close to what it would be. Okay. I'm literally going to try to scrape everything I can off because I really want to get much as I can. Like I said, I have a feeling that I won't have enough. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to go look at the grate first. Shake that up real good. Remember, latex paints. These are older paints, so these lids are sealed on very well. Mm, the spackling paste is what's going to give it its stony texture. I'm kind of liking this gray and for how much is left in here it's basically a little over a part so I'm gonna just go ahead and dump it of it. about that ooh nice and lovely I wish I had a smaller bucket but I don't I then I only need like the three gallon bucket I was running errands yesterday but the places I went that have kind of this stuff only had five gallon buckets so I guess I had this I bought one anyways but I'm gonna just use up this old one I don't care what really happens to it buckets are cheap I made like three dollars at Walmart okay I'm gonna add a little bit of the type on wood glue uh, that's kind of I'm kind of eyeballing this one Probably like half a part, maybe like that. Okay, I'm gonna mix it up. <sighs> now we get our little mixer and we start. Just a color tint. I'm trying to get some good light in here to see what it's like a light gray. 
where I'm mixing at is kind of in a dark shadow. So I can't really see. So I'm gonna add a little bit, of, just a little bit of black because I do want to tint it and I do want to make it a little bit thinner. So I'm gonna add a little bit of black, just a little. And if I'm, if it's too dark, I'll just go back and add the remainder of that gray. It's not much black. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and work out the big bucket that we mixed with it. And probably have to do this in our favorite little segment of our show is what we call time lapse. Rock, Rock stupid yeah. time lapse. Well, I tried it both ways. I tried it with just, hey, just watch me do it in real time. And here we go. Tweak mode. Sorry. Hopefully this won't last long. Hopefully the pain will be over real soon. It'll be over soon. I promise you. It'll hurt for a little bit, but it's okay. Boy. Let me tell you something about working with this monster mud. It's just like dealing with a bunch of thick, thick, thick paint. Just make sure you get the everywhere. Get that thing loaded and good. It's a real messy job. But you know what? You're going to have to do it. So. It's all, it's all it really is as far as applying it. It's just load it up, spread it around like the paint and let it give it some give it some good dry time preferably 24 hours some shit like that so here we go back to the show okay we are done monster mudding and boy I just almost like nearly didn't have enough now a little trick that I've kind of learned on how to do this, just letting you know this is my first time actually playing with this stuff. If you have fine detail, you want to very be careful on filling it all in because it'll keep flowing into your wording and your lettering and it can just bury it for good. But if that kind of happens, you want to take like a small brush and you want to push it out like this. Knowing if you get these cheap 50 cent brushes, it's okay because you're going to throw them out anyways. So you can just kind of push it out push out the letter out of all the lettering or details so it doesn't fill in too much and you won't lose it there's a couple of them a couple spots and a couple of these tombstones i may have to go back and just get some type of little scraping tool and just kind of like dig it out just a little bit so that way it is still kind of legible i mean the next step after this is the the more paint detail on you know adding your blacks your whites your highlights and that stuff of course what we have to do next is actually in the recessed areas is kind of paint a, is to actually paint a black um what i'm going to do i've seen others where they'll just go ahead and throw it all just block it all in and knowing that they're going to paint over the surface of it and drag it out i'm going to be a little more careful just because of the detail i'm going to just go into the lettering with put the black and try not to get it all over and then do your grays whites dark grays black whatever over the whole thing and when i mean that i literally had enough i was scraping the bottom just to finish this last one 
As you can see, I really don't have anything left. I mean, scrape, scrape, scrape. So I was kind of worried that I wasn't going to have enough when I got down to this last guy, but I put, I pulled through and got it done. So that's all that really matters. So we're monster mudded. So I'm going to let this stuff dry. Probably just over overnight. It's actually morning doing this. So I want to make sure this is fully kind of fully dried before I mess with anything else. And so the next step is we're going to go do our detailing on these things. And then these things should actually be done. 